Hello everyone, today I am going to be reviewing this, the Ford Fiesta. I think it's the Mark 8, only I'm not really much of a Ford person and it does look a lot like the Mark 7. But that's not too bad, because actually I really don't mind the looks of the Mark 7. Now, I'm not an expert in these things at all, so I'm going to do a very, very brief walk and talk, show you some of the key things about this specific car, and then we'll get out and drive. Because although it is lovely and nice and sunny here at Silverstone Circuit in the heart of England, it's ruddy cold. It's about three degrees, and I'm only just about tolerating it because there's no wind at present. And I know this place pretty well, the wind will arrive. Anyway, the big change with the 8th generation Fiesta, now just in case you're arguing about what generation it is, in the UK we seem to call them a different generation to the rest of the world, so don't worry about that. Anyway, the new ST is the fact that under here you have a 1.5 litre three-pot replacing the old 1.6 four-cylinder EcoBoost. Now, I can't really tell you how that's changed things while the car's sat here static. What I will show you is a few things that are unique to this specific car. This is an ST3, so it's the top level trim ST. Very, very well specified, gotta be honest, and for the sort of 22 grand list price that an ST is, it's really good. This car's also got a few options that I think are very, very wise to have. So this has just been lowered. You now have KW by ST Engineering or something along those lines, spring. So it's a 20 mil lowering front and rear. It looks a little high at the front at the moment, but this is a very, very recent installation, so it is still settling. At the back, you have this very, very sexy looking Miltec exhaust. Now, again, we're gonna see what that does for the tone, but it looks nice at the back, not too showy, you know, super silly tips. But this is, of course, you have to remember, it being a modern car, it has the petrol particulate filter. So it's a, a petrol particulate filter back exhaust. So if you're one of these people that watches videos on cars for some reason and you, you hate people doing decats and all that stuff, that's not happened here. It's just the very last section of exhaust. You've got these 18 inch wheels, which I actually do quite like. It's panoramic sunroof, very nice. And on the inside is where you've got the biggest, most obvious changes from the seventh generation car. You have a nice, big, modern looking screen here. Again, it does follow this modern trend of sort of designers that seem to have forgotten the fact that you need to put one of these screens in a car, but I've seen worse. I've seen worse, so this is not actually too bad. Not too many buttons in here, which was one of the big problems I had with the Mark 7. It had a million buttons and was very, very confusing to use. You have some very nice metal pedals down here, and this screen is nice and easy to read, a lot more modern, and of course, like any modern car, it likes to go bong at me for any reason at all. Now, the real test of whether they've improved things in here is gonna be whether I can choose a DAB radio station on here with any ease, because the last car required you to basically be a Mensa candidate to understand how it worked. But this one, oh look, it's touchscreen, there's DAB, and there's some stations. Oh look, look how easy that is. Ford, why couldn't you do this last time round? That's how you meant to do it. My station of choice is Planet Rock. So, in here it's pretty nice. One of the other things that this car has been specified, which is an option that I think everyone should tick, is the Ford Performance Pack. The big thing you get with that is a limited slip differential up front. If this car is anything like the last one, traction is going to be an issue, even in totally stock trim. So just having that diff is just going to let you get that power to the floor and enjoy it a little bit more. I even really, really do quite like this steering wheel. It's a little on the chunky and soft side, but actually it feels really, really nice. Oddly, this car's owner is not actually a Ford person, much like me, but He's a pretty honest guy, much like me, and I think they've made some real improvements in here. Got these lovely seats as well that hug you really nicely, and do you feel just a touch softer than the last one? B&O sound system 
That's pretty flash, but we're not here for sound systems. We're here to drive. So let's do that. So first impressions while we're on this relatively unexciting road are certainly one of a surprising level of quality. This interior is really, really nice and it does feel like a marked improvement over the previous generation of car. Now the noise that this car makes, I'd be lying if I said it's the sort of thing that is the stuff of automotive dreams, but it's fairly gruff, very typical of most three-cylinder cars. And I also found out from this car's owner, who runs his own YouTube channel, by the way, so if you want to know more about this from someone that obviously knows more about them, then go visit him, and that's JB space CTR. Not the word space, just a gap between the two. So go and follow him, give him a subscribe, and if this isn't the first video of mine that you're watching, and you haven't subscribed yet, if you could do the same for me, I'd really appreciate that too. Now we've got the usual super low winter sun and it's very, very dry out there, but according to the car, it's five degrees, which actually is the highest temperature I've seen quoted so far. Now, even in sixth gear, it pulls along very nicely for such a small little car. And before we get on to the twisties, which really is where this car needs to shine, I suppose I should talk you through some of the figures because I looked them up and if you were considering upgrading your Mark 7 to a Mark 8 based on paper, well, it wouldn't really make an awful lot of sense. Now this car's got the 1.5 litre three banger versus the old 1.64. It's putting out 200 horsepower, which is exactly the same as the last line ST200s from the previous cars. So, does it make that up by having a bit more torque? No. So, does it make that up by being a bit lighter? No. Though, it doesn't necessarily make an awful lot of sense if you're trying to, say, have a performance improvement. And if you want a really, really, really quick, very small front-wheel drive hatch, then clearly the modification route with the seventh generation car is a lot more mature. How far people are going to be able to take this car, I couldn't say. But if you're not that worried about doing that sort of thing, well, from in here, it certainly feels like a real step up. And just tootling along the A43 at exactly 70 miles an hour because they do have speed cameras everywhere here. Well, the handling shows promise. It's got that same sort of feel that the last car had. And truthfully, Ford got so much right with the little Fiesta last time round that if it isn't all that different to that car, it's not really a big problem, is it? Well, the Skoda Yeti is no match for the mighty Fiesta. <laughs> and I'm going to have an exercise caution here because it is bone dry out there, but it is also very cold and so it is a bit slippy. The brakes certainly stop the car well enough. Now, this car being lowered, this is a bit of a test for suspension. That's doing all right. Whee! She lifts and she bumps. You can really feel the car moving under you. Well, one thing this car does is it does give you, it moves a lot, it moves around quite a bit, but it also communicates to you exactly what it's doing. The tricky thing about doing YouTube stuff is that, of course, you have to strike a balance between finding out what a car is like to drive and also being respectful of somebody's property and doing your very, very best not to insert it into any hedges, fences or brick walls. With something like this, that job is relatively easy because it tells you very, very clearly what its limits are and what it can do and what it can't. We were discussing, the owner and I, about the Focus RS. And one of the big problems that car has, or I felt, is that it didn't do that. It didn't talk to me in anywhere near the same way. I, I don't hate the Focus RS at all, but I'm just not interested in it whatsoever. The gearbox is nice to use. 
even the knob itself feels lovely in the hand. Who uh, misses? Although this is certainly on the firmer side, it's it's not at all uncomfortable. Come on. It picks up speed really quickly, like really, really quickly. That's um very, very impressive. And then when you sit back and relax, it's it's fine. I wouldn't say that I'm really feeling much from the exhaust at the moment, but then it is almost completely a stock system. So that's not really a big surprise. And it still sounds nice enough. And of course, when you're then cruising at, you know, as we are now 60 miles an hour, it's fairly comfy. Uh, road noise isn't too bad for this class of car everything feels nice and that's kind of the point of a little hatch like this is that yeah you are going to have occasional blasts of fun like this and a car like this is going to mean that you can have that fun probably more often than in other cars you know even in something like my 911 on these kind of roads and these kind of conditions you you aren't going to be going really any faster than this so that, that, that's just the truth of it The Mark 8 Fiesta really just carries on from the previous car, and that's really not a bad thing at all. It looks basically the same. I maybe would have liked it to have looked a, a little bit different, considering how many of these Ford are going to sell, then that would be nice. Um, they are still very, very nickable, apparently, and uh, that unfortunately is a shame, and that is a bit of a, a blot on the Fiesta's uh, copybook. I wish they'd kept a four-cylinder engine in this, I really, really do. But I'm keen to see what happens with the 1.5 three-pot, see what the tuning houses are doing. I'm sure many of them are already hard at work planning what they're going to do to it and the way that they can make this even faster and more ludicrous. But truthfully, honestly, they used to say, and bear in mind, I mean, like a decade ago, that you shouldn't really have any more than about 200 horsepower in a front-wheel drive car. They couldn't cope. Our technology moved on, people, especially companies like Ford, got increasingly clever with how they deliver these even larger power figures to the front wheels, and, and you know, they've been successful to some degree, you know, some more than others. And, okay, I'm sure you can now put more than 200 horsepower through a front-wheel drive car, but this is probably proof, if ever it were needed, that you don't have to. Because all you need is about 200 horsepower, a good chassis, a reasonable weight figure, and a well set up car, and you can have all the fun you need. So there you go. Business as usual, Fiesta's still brilliant. Are there other cars in this class that are just as good? Maybe. But I haven't driven them yet. But I do have a couple of plans to try some of them out. So stay tuned for those. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Please remember to check out JBCTR. Hit the like button, comment below, and we'll see you for the next one. Bye-bye.